All right. It's simple test. If you say that you are a Christian and that you believe in God and your armor is full, the armor of God, the armor of Christ. Okay, as Jesus... Okay, what did Jesus and his disciples feed the 5,000, of the multitude of 5,000, which is more like 10,000 because of the women and children? What did, he, what did he feed them? Simple test. <laughs> yes, he fed them five loaves and two fish. But what does Jesus say that the loaves are? What are the loaves of bread? What are the two fish? The bread in the Bible, of what Jesus says, the bread represents, it's the word of God. It's the word of Jesus, of faith only. It is not literally bread. Your armor is zero. You have no armor protecting you if you do not know what the bread is. The bread is the word of God. What is a bigger miracle? Well, or no, what what did Jesus say? I'll fill you, I'll fill you, and you'll never be hungry again. That's what he told them. And not one of them, of the five thousand, which is Mark twenty, not one of them were ever were ever hungry. They were never hungry again. Not one of them. Not one. But if it was fish and bread, like you think they are, which probably 98% or 95% of the people think of it, real believers, they know exactly what the bread is. Real simple. But remember, like we already said, shame on you if you do not read your Bible. That's how you build your armor up, is knowing Jesus Christ and God. And if you do not read your Bible and unlock, unlock all the parables and these keys, your brain is this. But every key that you unlock in the Bible of the parables, you grow. And then you unlock another key in your brain. It is called building up the armor of God. Building up the armor of Christ. As I love my Christ... I do nothing but draw pictures of him and the armor of God and I hang him up high in my room. See at the bottom right there, the lamb. He only speaks love out of his heart and he is the keyhole. He is an angel. But then the devil hides behind and just listens because he doesn't want them to see them. Remember, we're falling off the graft. Don't be the guy that walks away. The Jew guy. That walks away. Alright, so the 5,000, what do you guys think is a bigger miracle? Every single person that Jesus talked to, every single one, they all left full and they never had to eat again. And there wasn't one that that walked away without believing in God. Which is what do you guys think is a miracle? Someone that is hungry again the next day because they got some. They you know had two fish, and once if you had a whale there, and they all ate the whale. Seems like enough food to me, but that's. But that's not the point. And the number one thing is, what does Jesus hate the most? He hates magic, sorcery, and witchcraft. He hates that. So, the bread is the word of God. And they all ate of it. And they all heard what Jesus said. Remember, Jesus Christ is a teacher. He is a teacher. And he said, and every one of them walked away, all believing for the rest of your life. That is a. 
a miracle. Because I most no one could sit down five thousand people and preach God and make them all believe. Because none of them believed at first. But over that in that night he he teach, taught them something. The belief of God, the one up in heaven, and a kingdom. Now that's a miracle, dude, to have five thousand people all believe in God. Wow, that's a huge miracle. Remember, just, you have to read your Bible to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You have to know his parables. That is getting to know Jesus. As Jesus said, if you do not know me, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. How do you get to know Jesus? I've got to read it. I started reading the Bible maybe just maybe very four, four months ago. So I cried out to him because I knew I had a demon. I had a demon one time, not no more, which everybody does that doesn't believe in God. My demon, his name was Legion. Who is Legion? He is a demon and he is many. Legion is the demon of drunkenness. Drunkenness. Anxiety comes from drunkenness. Remember, Legion is many. Drunkenness, anxiety, fear. Fear. But anxiety comes from all of this, from Legion. I never had anxiety when I was younger, but I had it when I was a drunkard. Remember, there's nothing wrong with having some drinks once in a while. As Jesus Christ said, take all things with moderation. If you can't handle something, do not do it. God wants us to have a good time on the earth, but take all things with moderation. All things. If you can't handle it, don't do it. It's not from this earth. Don't take it. And people are taking these things, antidepressants and anxiety pills, and they're, years down the road, they're waking up with holes in their brain, just like ecstasy does. <laughs> Sick, dude. Holes, dude. Like worms. Don't take that stuff. Now it's now one out of every six people taking antidepressants in the USA. And then some of my friends, they say they get off of that stuff. And they're like, oh, dude, I was like in some weird world, dude. And they feel so much, oh my, God. It's disgusting, dude. One, it's pretty much like one out of four people take that stuff down. It's just a chemical there. It's just messing up your brain, fizzing it out. Jesus told me, he told me, especially about the 5,000, that is a big miracle. No one could do that. And what Jesus told me, he said we could go two ways in these seven, in these three and a half years of the seven year two relation. We go two ways. Everybody repents in the world and believes in God. Everybody that would be a miracle, and we need Jesus to do it. And his disciples. Jesus knew 100% that there was a kingdom of heaven. And I say it to everybody that knows me, even my family members. If you are not a Christian, and you do not read the Bible out loud to yourselves, and read it, and know it in less than just a couple of months, in less than six months, and I'll, I'll ask you a parable out of the Bible, and if you don't know what it means, that means that you do not read the Bible, and I will not talk to you ever again. Jesus had to say this to his own family many times, in a parable. Because Jesus loved his family so much, he had to tell them that, because he knew 100%, because he is the Son of God, that there was a heaven. As 
I know 100% that there's a heaven. Not because I'm the son of God. Just because I know that there's a heaven. Because I've seen it. I've felt it. I've read it. Out of this book. So please. If you're a friend of mine. Or a family member. And you do not know Jesus. And you haven't built up your armor in full. I will not talk to you. And I will know if you have or not. Just by talking to you about Jesus. And if you do not know Jesus. I do not know you. If you're my cousin. If you're my best friend. Whatever. If you don't know the basic parable of the bread. I do not know you. And I will never talk to you ever again. Jesus said this. For Christians say this for a reason. Real Christians. Same with Raul Reese and all his friends. How do I know? Because I, I hung out with Raul Reese and Mark and those guys in Hawaii for a whole week. Raul Reese is only there for maybe a day or whatever. But I hung out with, his, with Mark and, and some of his buddies from Calvary Chapel for a week. Doing air conditioning at the Calvary Chapel in Oahu. For a week. And they, what did they say? We do not hang out with anybody that are not Christians. Even if they're fan, you know, loved ones. Because they know 100% in their, in their hearts and their soul. That there is a kingdom of heaven. And if you guys need a, a teacher, listen to Rawl. Because my Holy Spirit matches up with Rawl's. Because we come to the same conclusions, the same facts, the same exact conclusions. Because I used to argue with Raul Reese's sayings when I go to church. I'd come out of there, I'd be like, no, nah, I don't think he was right about this. I don't think he was right about that. I don't think he was right about this. But now, after I've read the Bible, and I, and I have gone through repentance, of getting burned on my right cheek, and the Holy Spirit... I had a black eye because I got burned on my right cheek after repentance. A burn. As my neighbor said, that I was arguing with somebody in my house while I was asleep after I repented. He said, he said, I, he said that I sounded like, like I was telling someone to get the F out of my house. I have witnesses of this. Called repentance. What did G what did John say that Jesus Christ cleaned people with? Like you know. What did he what did he say? He goes, I know somebody that is that is um Alright. And then the and then the Pharisees came up to John and said, No. And then the Pharisees said, What are you baptized with then? And he says, I baptize with water. And then but and he said, I know someone that's greater there's someone much greater than I though. He is the light. And the Pharisees goes, Who? And then John's all Jesus. And they're like, Well, who's this Jesus character? And then Jesus said, I mean John said John said, uh, Oh, he is great. And you know what he baptizes with? The Holy Spirit and fire! <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit could cleanse you with Jesus, but someone that needs it, like Legion, the one from anxiety, where people take pills instead of just reading the Word of God, and of repentance, takes two minutes, guys. But you can't have one ounce of doubt. Not one ounce of doubt. So it won't work. <laughs> As I was burned on my right cheek and had a black eye for two weeks afterwards. As my neighbor said, it sounded like you were arguing with someone. It was Jesus arguing with Legion. Remember, there once were two civilizations. The first two, there was no one before them. These two civilizations, right... Um, they knew about God and the devil and all that. You know why they knew about God so much? Because they had no one to tell them that there wasn't. 
See what I'm saying? Because there's no, there's no, there was no, there had no one to hide it from them. Because they were the first two civilizations, like we have now. We have people hiding religion from people. Hiding it. It's just really shitty. The first civilizations, they knew. Because they had no one to hide it from them. Alright. John. Come on. Zoom in, dude. And the Father who sent me, he has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. Remember, belief at first. You cannot, you have to believe without seeing God and Jesus. He is not going to show himself to you guys, ever. Belie it's all about believing and not seeing. And then when you read the Bible, then Jesus will come and talk to you. He will never show himself to you if you don't believe without seeing. <laughs> you know, some people, they'll never see Jesus or God. And they're full believers and they know everything. They don't need to see him. Because they already believe 100%. It's all about believing without seeing. You fools. And you do not have his word abiding in you. For you do not believe him whom sent he sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is these that bear witness of me. That search the scriptures. And you are unwilling to come to me. That you may have life. I, I do not receive glory from men. But I know you. That you do not have the love of God in yourselves. That's right. People if they love God and love Jesus. They would read the book. They would read. Like I am constantly four months in. I already know what the bread is. I could read a parable and I could tell you the meaning of it. And I could tell you the other meaning that's inside of it. Because a lot of parables, they'll have three meanings sometimes inside of them. But you got to have an open mind. Like Jesus did. He is a smart man. A non-believer cannot read his parables. I don't know how he did it. Oh, oh I know how because he had a teacher. His father, God. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If anyone shall come in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another, and do not seek the glory that is from the one who, and only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who accuses you is Moses. A Moses will accuse people for not believing in whom you have set your hope. For if you believe Moses, you should believe me. For he wrote of me. As he did. Moses did in Exodus. we talk about Jesus. In Genesis, God had... In Genesis, God was walking with somebody in the garden. It was his son. <laughs> he was talking to somebody, dude. People don't read their Bible and sad. All right. And this he was saying to me, test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Like I was testing everybody. They fit, and they think I'm crazy for reading a parable because they can't understand it. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them. For everyone to receive a little of the word. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, and Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. What are these 
for so many people. <laughs> Where are these for so many people? Five, two fish and five loaves. And he said, so many people. It's the word of God, guys. Jesus said, you never heard the breath of Christ? Jesus said, have the people sit down.